Hi there, truck trailer and RV owners. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at Bulldog Winch's 12,000 pound wireless winch. And this is what our winch is gonna look like when it's installed. It is a very small, low profile package for such a massive winch. That 12,000 pound capacity is sucked in very close to our mounting bracket. And we've got everything just kind of right here. And that'll allow us to install this monster on a lot of applications that normally you wouldn't be able to put something so big on because your fairly would stick out a little bit further and your components just might be a little bit spaced a little bit further apart, a little bit taller and a little bit wider. So by bringing it all together, we can really maximize the trailers that this will operate with. With a 12,000 pound capacity too, you can do a whole lot of stuff with this. We could easily pull up any vehicle that we need to here on the back, as well as a lot of your heavier duty equipment that you may need to pull with you as well. It has a 12,000 pound pull, and that's, a, that's our static load from a stop, but that goes all the way up to 120,000 pounds for its rolling pull. So if you've got a, maybe even a tractor trailer or something that's got a nice load on it, and you just it's stuck and you just need to move it forward a little bit, maybe to get it out of the way, get a different car in the bay, you can use this bad boy right here, hook it up and you can get that rolling. We're able to achieve this massive pulling power with our six horsepower motor that's on here, as well as the planetary gear set inside that gives us the mechanical advantage we need to be able to pull such heavy weights. Our synthetic rope here is matched to ensure that we've got capacity capabilities on here that can keep up with our winch here and it is a synthetic rope which I like the synthetic rope because it's not going to corrode or anything like that in time it's a little bit more pliable too so you can kind of get it around some corners and stuff we're going to go ahead and bring it out some and we can see it's just a nice heavy duty woven rope uh, it's very thick that synthetic material is going to last for a nice long time and again I, I really like it because if you are working on your trailer and you've got some stuff maybe on here and you got a cable and it rubs it, it can really damage stuff really fast. You obviously don't want it to ever rub on things, but with the synthetic rope, it's a little bit more forgiving. Our fair lead here is nice and machined with smooth surfaces to ensure that as our cable goes in and out, even under extreme loads, it's not gonna damage our synthetic rope. And one of the coolest things to me with this is that the remote here for our winch, you have the option to either plug it in directly to the winch with the plug on the bottom as well as our connector over here on the winch or even better it's wireless so we can just operate it here with battery power inside and this really gives you the freedom to be able to look around your vehicle or whatever you're pulling up you can check both sides easily and make sure that you're pulling up nice and even with the cable connection on a lot of your winches you're kind of limited to maybe only checking things on one side and then you got to set your remote down walk over to the other side or because you're cables getting caught up on stuff. This gives you a whole lot of freedom, which is gonna save you a lot of time. Our rope has 100 foot of length with it as well. So it's nice that we've got a wireless remote again to get that distance away so we can make our connections and operate it from, uh, from quite a ways away. Now when using this, if you're gonna be taking your rope out, we've got a pretty long trailer that we're on here, so we don't really wanna use the motor to go out the entire way. That's just wearing, putting excessive wear on our motor and it's gonna take a lot longer. We can use the release here, and that's gonna allow it to free spin, and then we can just grab it and run right all the way to the back of the trailer as necessary to get that to uh, pull up. So we've gone ahead and pulled some of our rope out, and then we switched our lever back. And when you have it in the regular operating mode, where you can move it in and out, it has a brake on it that will hold 100% of the load. It locks nice and tight. And that's really nice because if you're pulling something up and maybe you get it to where it's kind of halfway on the trailer and you find, oh no, I need to move this out of the way or whatever we need to do, we can go ahead and move that real quick and it's gonna hold that in place for us to move, uh, maybe move a wheel chalk or something out of the way and then continue pulling it on up. So having that hold pressure is really nice. There's just a lot of uses for it. Um, you can imagine all the things you could use a winch for besides just pulling uh, vehicles and stuff like that onto this trailer. Uh, you could definitely use it out of the job site for helping you get some, move some heavy objects as well. And for me, the big selling point of this winch is the high weight capacities it's got and the wireless remote feature. So we've gone ahead and gone 100, we're 100 feet away now. So we're pretty much maxed out on our rope that we've got on our winch now. And let's see if it works at this distance.
and that's awesome. The fact that it works at its full length means we've just got all the freedom in the world to be able to operate this and get hooked up. It just really frees up how quickly we're gonna be able to get jobs done with this winch over one that's got a wire, and it's gonna require maybe another guy up there or you to walk back and forth a bunch of times. The planetary gear set that's inside of our winch here is a three-stage, 265 to one gear ratio planetary gear set. So that's gonna give us a ton of mechanical advantage. And with the three-stage planetary gear set, we're gonna have faster drum speed than what we would on a single or two-stage planetary gear set. And it's also gonna be faster than your worm drives as well. If we head over to our electronics here, it's also nice that everything's going to be weather resistant up to IP67. So it's really nice that we've got everything protected here. Our cap for our uh, mechanical connection here, if we wanted to have that direct connection to our remote, is all covered up here. The cable that comes with it for connecting your remote is also going to be weather resistant. So that way you don't have to worry about any issues happening if you happen to be working in the rain. Uh, you get about 20 foot of cable on the wired remote, so it is nice you've got some length there in case uh, the battery does die after you've been using this thing for you know several hours and some stuff. Maybe your remote dies, you've had this thing hooked up for a long time, you got this as a backup, so it's nice that we've got that as well. And all of our cable connections here are nice heavy duty coated with rubber boots to keep everything protected from accidental shorts. You know, you're working around with it, you might be adding some stuff, flinging your wrenches around. We've got covers on all of our positives here on all of our connections on the winch as well. So here we've got our winch. We've gone ahead and pulled it out of the box and this is everything we're gonna get inside of our box here. You've got your winch, you've got your mounting plate, your fair lead for your synthetic cable here, your rope, and you've got your mounting hardware there as well. This is going to include the mounting hardware to get your winch attached to the bracket, as well as some mounting hardware to get the bracket attached to your trailer. We've got our controller here on the side, as well as the, the necessary cabling to get it attached to our battery to get it hooked up. And then lastly here on the end, we've got our remote here that just simply plugs into the unit so we can operate it uh, without having to be right next to it. We can kind of get better visuals if we can walk around a little bit and be able to see as we're pulling it up. So before we do anything, we're going to have to do a little bit of pre-assembly here and get, get this guy put together. We'll go ahead and get the winch mounted onto the bracket. We'll use the tapered hardware here to attach it. If we look at the bottom of the bracket here, we can see that that's also tapered. So that makes it easy to know where those bolts are going to go and line up. These are going to thread into the square nuts located here and these square nuts will slide into a slot on the bottom of our winch. So we'll just flip that over so we can take a look at that there. Here we can see the little slot where that'll slide in. So you can imagine that our bracket's gonna sit on here and it'll thread right down into that. We need to make sure that we've got it on the appropriate side though, so that way when this comes out, it is going to feed through our fair lead. And we want that to be on the side that's got our Bulldog winch label here. So it would eventually sit like this and our cable would pass through. After you've got your lower bracket attached, or after you've kind of got know how you're gonna be setting this up, I'd recommend putting the fair lead on before attaching the bracket just because it's gonna be easier to get to the hardware. And you see it'll still slide through there. So I would attach the fair lead to the bracket and then the bracket to the winch. Your fair lead will attach using the large uh, Allen head bolts that come in your kit. You just simply slide those through and then on the back side we can secure it with a washer lock, washer and a nut. After you've got those assembled, you'll need to put your hook in place. The hook here does come disassembled. I went ahead and slid the little lead on there to make it a little easier to grab. And this is a, a pressed fit device. So our cable there will be secured using this pressed fit lead here. So we'd simply just take, take the end after feeding it through our fair lead and all these components here. It would hook on there like that. The two pieces would slide together here. Then this coupler here goes in the middle between them. And then our pin here will have one side that's just ever so slightly tapered there 
That'll slide through all of our components here and then we'll drive this into place and it'll stay in there uh, due to the ribs that's in there that kind of bites and digs into the metal that'll hold that all together. So we're gonna go ahead and get all this assembled here. We're also gonna mount our electrical on the end as well. There's a little bracket here. We got a couple of little black screws that you'll use to attach that. These ones are also easy to identify where they go because they're also tapered, but they're tapered significantly smaller. So you can see that they would go there on the end and just thread right into the bracketry on the bottom here. And you get a couple different spacing so you can choose whatever's best for your particular trailer. If you wanna have it a little further apart, get a little more spacing to get in there to work on it and service it, or if you don't have quite that extra room, you could squeeze it down a little bit tighter uh, if you've got a little bit more uh, restricted spacing. So we're gonna go ahead and get all this together now, and then we'll come back to you here. So we're just gonna make sure we get all these snug down, especially these bottom ones here. This is what's gonna attach our actual winch to the bracket that we're gonna have then secured to the trailer, so we don't want these coming off of here. And once we get these assembled, we can go ahead and get it mounted up on the trailer then. And then all that really we got after that is just to get it all properly wired up. So here we've got it completely assembled. Got our bracket nice and secure to our winch. We've got our fair lead mounted here on the front with our cable going through it. You can see that it's underwound coming off like the bottom of our roll here, going through. And then we've got it attached to the end here. We went ahead also and hooked up our cables for our wiring. And you'll, one of them comes pre-attached. We just mounted the module box on bottom like we talked about using those two screws. We chose the further spacing just to get our wires further away. It's a little bit easier to service. We've got plenty of room here on this trailer and that can also help heat dissipation and stuff a little bit better as well. So the positive cable is already pre-attached to your module box, but we did take the negative cable here that comes in your kit and we went ahead and put it on our negative stud down there. We did also take our module box positive wire and we ran it over to our winch here and connected it up. And then we took the other wires off our module box and that they're already color coded. So it's nice and easy, yellow to yellow, blue to blue. And we put those in place as well. We can slide our covers over top to protect those. So here we got all of our boots in place. It just covers up your colored ones here because uh, these ones all have the potential to be live. Uh, the black one here, our ground, is never going to be live. It's always ground, so that one doesn't have a cover. So now we've got our winch assembled, we're going to mount it on our trailer. It's always best to know where you're planning on putting it on the trailer. Our customer had prepared this trailer, he took it to a shop and had some brackets welded in place. So that way the spacing here lines up with our mounting bracket here. We've got those measurements online. Uh, we've got plenty of pictures here. Um, you can find on the website so you can Get those measurements and match this up using the specs that we've got there. Uh, it's always best to use the manufacturer's specs when setting these up. So now that we know where we're going to put it, we're just going to go ahead and set it into position up here. We're going to line up that hole with this hole and that sh should line up over here on the other side as well. And it looks like they did a very good job getting these brackets in place. Everything seems to mount up really well. So our mounting hardware comes with our winch, so we'll go ahead and use that now to get it secured. So we'll secure our hardware by taking our bolt. This is a nice round hole, so we're gonna drop the bolt straight down through it. And then on bottom, we're gonna follow that up with a washer, then a lock washer and a nut. And you always wanna put your washer side on your larger hole. Uh, so if one of the holes or something was slotted, that would be the side you would wanna make sure you get your washer on it. It's a nice round hole. That's a good candidate for the head of the bolt because uh, it's going to give us plenty of surface area there to contact. But in like larger slotted holes, that washer will take up uh, some of that gap and make sure we get plenty of surface area to clamp this down. So we've got that one loosely installed. We're just going to now repeat that three more times on the remaining holes to get the rest of the hardware loosely in place. Now that we've got all of our hardware in place, we can go back and tighten it all down. We're gonna use a 9 16th socket and wrench to tighten down the hardware that comes with your winch. So now that we've got our winch all mounted onto the trailer, we need to start wiring it up. And it's pretty easy because we just have two wires that comes off the winch that we'll need to wire. We got our positive and our negative here. 
The negative we're gonna connect directly to the negative on our battery. That way we get the best connection possible for the high amperage that this winch draws. With our positive, we are gonna hook this to a form of circuit protection before we go to our battery. Uh, fuse for this high of power is probably the best option. So that's what we're gonna be using today. We're gonna be using a 400 amp fuse from Bulldog. That's our fuse holder there. And then here's our fuse that we're gonna be using inside of it. And if we look at the ends of our fuse holder, it just takes bare wire. You just simply poke your bare wire in there and then you use the uh, set screw there to hold it down into place. So that's really nice that they chose this style of design because if we look at the positive cable uh, that we've got on our winch here, you can see it's got a ring terminal already made on the end for us, and that's great, because these are really large cables, and they're really difficult to crimp on something this big. A lot of times you need a special hydraulic crimper to do so. So since this takes just a bare wire in here, that means we've got a end here that we can connect to the battery, and we'll cut this down the line here, and then we can just strip back some of this, and then those bare wires will poke right into here. So it's kind of simplified our installation for us. Before we hook those up though, we need to go ahead and get this fuse holder mounted. We want to put it pretty close to our battery if we can. So our battery normally sits over here right in front of uh, where our wiring and everything is. I've gone ahead and slid it over to the left a little bit so we've got a little room to work. And we're going to mount it right below the battery charger that they've got uh, installed right here. And that way it'll sit just right behind our battery box, kind of stay out of the way. And our battery box, since it's going to sit right in front of it, will help protect it from anything kind of that might want to slide around here because they also use this as a storage compartment. Uh, so that'll help protect it from anything bumping into it. So we're gonna go ahead and get it mounted up. You do have to provide your own hardware. We're just gonna use some self-tapping screws. You can get those here at E-Trailer. Uh, we're using a pretty small size quarter inch socket for the head of that right there. So we're just gonna run this into place now. So I like to first kind of gather up where it's gonna mount, roughly right here. So I'll take my self-tapping screw and I'm gonna put it through the hole. And I'm just gonna kind of make a little bit of a scratchy. And so that way I know where I wanna put my screw. We're gonna run it in without the fuse first, just so we can get these threads started in there. And we know this is gonna put us in a relative location of where we want this to be. After we run that screw in to make our threads and back it back out, we know we've got a good spot. So now we'll take it and line up our self-tapping screw right in that hole that we had just made. And we're gonna run this down now. It's a lot easier to do the screw by itself than try to hold this big old fuse, fuse holder here when you're trying to run it in. So there we go, we get one started in there and now it'll hold it in the position we want it in and we'll run our self tappers in the three remaining holes. Now that we've got our fuse holder mounted, we'll take our positive wire and we're gonna route it over towards it. We're gonna cut off the excess, try to make sure that we've got enough here to go from our fuse holder back to our battery positive, that would be ideal. So we're gonna hold it up there and see if we can make that happen. And that looks like we've got quite a bit of cable length there that we should be able to make work. So now that we know where we wanna cut it, we're gonna go ahead and cut it there. Now, one of the things you do wanna probably have is heavy duty wire cutters. They look like this. They're a much heavier duty cutter. Your traditional wire cutters like this can get the job done, but uh, you're, it's a quick way to wear out the teeth there on the end, the little cutting end, and potentially chip off the end because it's quite a bit thicker than what these are really designed for. So we're gonna take our cutters here. We're gonna trim this off just like that. And then I actually like to use these to strip wires that are this thick as well. So we can take it around here. We're gonna strip back some of the wire. And I'm not squeezing real hard. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on it. And I'm just kind of twisting. So we're just trying to get rid of the sheathing on it. We don't want to cut any of the wires. So we very little pressure with a twisting motion. And then you can kind of do one of these back and forth. And that'll get that stripped back for you. So now we're gonna unscrew our cap here. Loosen up our Allen set screw that's in there. And that's gonna be way too big. All right, that looks like we got a five millimeter Allen key there. So 
We're gonna go ahead and loosen this up. You could remove it all the way if you want to, but you don't have to remove it all the way. It just has to be loose enough to be able to poke our wire in there. So we're just gonna bring our wire over. I like to twist it a little bit to help guide all the strands into the opening. We're gonna take our cap, slide that down over our fuse. Now we've got our cap and our grommet on our wire. We're gonna hook it to our terminal on our fuse holder. That terminal on your fuse holder, you can actually just pull it right out of the tube there. That'll make things a little bit easier. Uh, if you get the set screw out far enough, you can take out the sleeve that's inside. We're gonna take the sleeve that was located inside and we're gonna slide it over our wire here. A little bit of twist there can help make it easier to get this on your wire. Trying to get as many of the strands in there as possible. There we go. We'll then insert this now back into our uh, lug here, but you can see how it's solid on one side and there's an opening on the other. We want our opening to be where our set screw is. So we're lining that up. And if you need to, you can remove the set screw if you need it to be able to see. And then we'll tighten this down. And it looks like we're missing just a little bit, so we're gonna unscrew it. We'll just take our set screw out of there to make it a little easier. You'll know you're missing the center of it if it gets tight really fast, uh, because that means you're actually crushing the sleeve that we slid over it and not going down on the wire. So we kind of just pulled it out so we could line it up. and then we'll tighten it down. So now that we've got one side connected, we're gonna to go to the other side of our fuse holder now. We're gonna go ahead and pull this one off and we're gonna also slide off the rubber gasket on this one because we need this to slide all the way through the tube there. And by removing that gasket, it'll let it slide all the way through the tube. We'll then take our fuse now and we are gonna attach it to our connection here and then we'll slide it back through our tube. So we're just gonna go ahead and loosen this up. We just need to loosen it a little bit because once you got a gap there, you can see here that our fuse will slide right over it. We're gonna do it like this. So that way uh, this will kind of be resting on the bolt on the other side. It's gonna be inside the tube, so it'll be pretty well protected, but that can just a uh, little extra layer letting gravity do a little work for us. We'll then loosen up the lug on the other side. Slide our fuse onto there and then tighten it down. Go ahead and just push those back. We're gonna slide the entire fuse through our assembly. And what we can actually do, which I may do, I just we're kind of just doing a dry test fit here to see that hey, we're gonna be able to get this installed. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and attach the wire on the other side just because it's gonna be easier to work with it outside of this tube. But we just want to make sure everything's lined up because if your fuse is a little bit crooked on here, it may not slide through smoothly. So we know we're all good there. So we're gonna go ahead and take the other end of our wire that we had cut that we're gonna be connecting to our battery positive now. We'll strip back this end and we're gonna connect it to the other side of the fuse the same way that we did here. Don't forget to slide your cap and your gaskets over your wire before making your connection. We're also gonna grab that other gasket that we had taken off. And then we're just gonna perform the same procedures to get these connected now. So the end, the end ring terminal here, I was preparing for by sliding our parts on, but if we actually look here, it's small enough that everything slides over it. So it'll be easier to feed the wire through without these things on it. You just wanna pay attention if your ring terminal was too large there or something where it wouldn't work, you wouldn't be able to do that. So now we're just gonna feed everything through our tube. We'll go ahead and connect 
the one side. We're gonna give it just a little bit of a pull, just enough to bring it out enough that we can get access the groove there on the inside for the red ring terminal. I mean for the red O-ring. Slide that over in the groove. I like to twist it a little in case it kind of rolls up. The twists help to break it from being rolled. And then we'll follow those up with our outer gasket and our cap. Now we can go ahead and make our connections to our battery. Now we've got our fuse in line there. I slid the battery back over and you can see it's gonna hide all those things. Here's our positive connection here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the nut and washer. We're gonna bring our battery positive cable over, slide it down, and then just reinstall the nut onto there. And now we'll take our negative cable and we're gonna hook that to the negative post on our battery. I'm just gonna remove the nut holding the cables on. We'll then take our negative post, our negative terminal, slide it over the negative post, and reinstall the fastener there. So now that we've got our winch fully hooked up to our battery and everything, all that's left really is to test it out. This is the controller that it comes with, our handle assembly here. Oh, look at that. Wireless is working for us right out the box. We're not even plugged in, and it's set up in the wireless mode there. It's lit up there, so let's go ahead and hit out. And it looks like we've got good operation there. We're gonna go ahead and bring it back in. And that all seemed to work out great as well. Let's go ahead and plug it into the top of the unit and see if it works in wired mode. We're just gonna pull the cap off the plug up there. We're gonna take the end. If you look down inside, there is a notch on it inside of there. We're gonna line that notch up with the notch on the other side and doing so kind of puts this little piece of kind of divot on the plastic. That's at like a 90 from the notch. It'll put it kind of down from the hitch or from the, uh, from the winch there. We'll just click that on. It does show now that we're in wired mode. Let's try it again. And it all seems to be working properly there. Another neat thing about this setup here is that uh, the cable here on the other end can also disconnect. It's got a little four plug connector on it there. And once we disconnect it from there, it automatically switched back over to wireless mode and it seems to be functioning properly there as well. So now we've got it all hooked up and tested out. Really at this point, all I would recommend is to go back through your installation, zip tie up any loose wires that you've got routed down there so that way everything's nice and neat, provide proper cable relief for everything. And at that point, we're ready to uh, start hauling some stuff and pulling it up onto our trailer here. So after using it, one of the things I was thinking about was, hey, if this is wireless, and we had just unplugged it and everything worked and stuff like that and it switched over, is that gonna drain my battery? But it looks like it does time out after so long and we can energize it without having to plug it in or anything like that by pressing on the mode button there and it automatically puts it into wireless. And then if you wanna save some more battery life, once you're done using it, you can turn it off immediately by pressing the button again. And that completes our look at Bulldog's 12,000 pound wireless winch.